Okay. So, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to our Femme Occult Garden. Today with me, Belladonna, uh, and uh, with Datura and uh, Oleander. And uh, we are going to be talking today about heavenly bodies and astrology and planets uh, slash stars, moons and uh, other bodies on the sky. How do they impact our practice? How do we use them uh, in our practice? And what's their main purpose in our magic? Uh, so I'd say that uh, on the very beginning we could uh, just briefly introduce uh, our point of view uh, because of today it will be some kind of uh, comparison maybe or searching for common ideas uh, in uh, three different uh, ways of uh, practicing occultism basically uh, and uh, it's uh, eclectic witchcraft from my side then uh, Datura takes care about uh, ceremonial magic which is her path mostly uh, during last years over last years and uh, Olander will be talking with us uh, from the astrological point of view and perspective uh, so would you like to just tell a few words uh, to specify a little bit maybe uh, your Paths. Should I start maybe so you can think about it? Because I didn't pose this question. <laughs> I sent them the questions as always. And the first one is like, oh, yeah, I just was thinking about this question <laughs> last minute. So, well, for me, I'm an eclectic and uh, I'm a witch. Uh, it's quite connected to paganism, to the nature. God's uh, presented as uh, archetypes. And uh, working with uh, planets or heavenly bodies is definitely part of uh, my path. But we will uh, talk about it more in uh, what uh, kind of way. And uh, I have, uh, I'm feeling to be quite close to hedge witchcraft, even though I don't practice or work much uh, with uh, herbs and plants. I take more that uh, liminal kind of uh, part of being on the hedge or on the edge of something uh, or between the worlds. Um, yeah. And uh, I was working with uh, several different uh, pantheons uh, in that kind of way of uh, being presented uh, by people in uh, mythologies. Yeah, so that would be probably from my side. Could you continue that? I'm start making notes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, last time when we had the chat in three people, it was uh, with uh, Rhoda. She said like, why don't you take notes since you want to <laughs> talk about so many things uh, that uh, the others uh, were, were talking about uh, through, the, through their talk. Yeah, so that is taking notes now, but I can pass you the word or... Yes, 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 you can. Again, I'm, 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 I'm done for, for now with notes. Uh, generally in my practice, I am... Um, well, a classicist. <laughs> I'm an eclectic. Oh, I'm a classicist. <laughs> and I'm an astrologer. Hi! <laughs> uh, I work uh, mostly with uh, the seven classical planets in the Renaissance kind of sense, and it, that very much informs how I view the world. In general, uh, I view the planets as archetypes as well as um well no not as well as archetypes grouping uh, various entities and various uh different um what you call it <laughs> um beings be, yeah being beings entities but also vlastnosti mm. um abilities mm. abilities um just innate, uh... dude, now I'm blanking. Uh... <laughs> uh, basically, oh, set, set of correspondences, that, that's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. uh, sets of correspondences that combine uh, entities, that combine uh, different uh, plants. Um... I will Google it because I... <laughs> <laughs> it's um, something i believe that this word doesn't have a exact english translation properties properties and mm, attributes it's still that's, that's attributes attributes would be closer that's but it's like saying. this word connects all together correspondences properties attributes skills abilities and all yes. this stuff together from from my point of view okay yeah of, of various natures <laughs> so the language window for the start <laughs> 
I haven't spoken in English in two weeks, so I'm 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 a little bit rusty. <laughs> so I will start again very briefly. Uh, to me, planets are both uh, archetypes of like general human nature, but also uh, archetypes combi combining various attributes that have similarities that um, have some sort of impact on the world. And that's how I work with them or work with entities connected to those planets in terms of dividing various um, paths and then conquering, like divide and conquer, very Roman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very classic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, okay. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> cool. And uh, Oleander? Um, I will talk today about my personal view of the planet, so mm -hmm. I will not be speaking the name of like, uh, official astrology. I have to say that I find myself very much in uh, Datura's words. So I would observe planets as archetypes and parts of uh, human nature and psyche, but also as correspondences and uh, part of material world. Um, in that way, I see my practice and astrology as a medium between uh, world of spirit and world of the matter and planet as a symbol would be something that acts on both of these um, mm -hmm. planets at the same time. Okay, well, that's very cool. In the same time, <laughs> I hope that we will have something to talk about because I personally <laughs> view planets as well as archetypes and correspondences. <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway so let's uh take the first uh question that i that i wrote that is like a official question and uh that was what is the role meaning and use of uh, the planet so the meaning i think we covered uh briefly now that uh archetypes correspondences is probably uh the are probably the main words. Uh, hi, Void. How are you keeping? Uh, thank you for joining us as well. I forgot to tell everybody. Thank you, everyone who started following us since the last uh, stream. And uh, yeah, so what uh, kind of role uh, do the planets or the heavenly bodies have uh, in your practice? Uh, is it some kind of... Uh, W would you make some kind of hierarchy or would you see it on the same kind of level as uh, any other things? Uh, I might uh, start again uh, that uh, for me, the planets are quite connected to the timing in my practice. They are very much uh, helping me or I'm looking at uh, the ruling planet or the planet that uh, takes care about a specific day. I don't work that much uh, with uh, planetary hours. Maybe Datura does. We shall see. And uh, I figured, uh, because I was thinking about this uh, topic, uh, a little bit more to the depth, uh, because normally I'm just working this way. These are the correspondences. I just include them to my practice. And I'm not thinking about it that much, but uh, when we were preparing this call and this, uh, this talk, I was thinking, yeah, well, how do they actually work? What is the main uh, part of theirs? And uh, for me, they are mainly connected uh, to time and timing. So as uh, an eclectic witch, uh, I, of course, work a lot uh, with uh, the cycle of uh, the sun slash uh, with uh, the cycle of uh, the earth itself uh, and uh, their movement to together and uh, with the moon and the moon phases. Moon phases are quite important uh, to me and I'm checking them uh, before each ritual if... Uh, to lead it uh, in uh, some kind of uh, a positive way and gaining way or a rather a banishing way. Uh, for example, now I was preparing a ritual for Ostara and uh, with uh, Ostara, since it's uh, the spring equinox, you can't really exactly uh, choose uh, the time within the whole month or within the moon cycle. And uh, I've seen that on that day, it will be that uh, the moon uh, will be in the D position. I'm always mismatching in English, waxing and vanning, the one that is growing. Uh, That's waxing. Waxing, thank you. Uh, that the moon will be waxing. And uh, uh, I wanted to focus on health. So with the health things, uh, you can focus either on gaining health, 
which is for the waxing moon, or if I would see uh, that uh, the moon is uh, bunning, meaning that it's going backwards uh, towards the dark phase, I would rather be trying to push away any kind of uh, bacteria, viruses and uh, threats for the health or any kind of uh, disease that is already in the body. Uh, so this way, that's probably the main role uh, that uh, the planets and the heavenly bodies have uh, in my practice connected to uh, the timing of the ritual and also to its topic based on what is uh, the moon phase currently. Yeah. Natura? <laughs> you will be going <laughs> in the think, circle, I'd say. I agree. We'll be agreeing today. <laughs> Uh, before I start, I just wanted to welcome uh, everybody who knew who's in chat and the fact that we're talking doesn't mean that you can't share your thoughts with us, your agreements, disagreements, uh, whatever your path is, feel free to share with us. We will be reading the comments as we go. Mm -hmm. So, And the, the questions are also welcome. Uh, to me, uh, in my practice, uh, I can't say I worship planets because I don't, but generally uh, in working either rituals or um, some daily spiritual practices, uh, whatever, uh, the planet is like the higher overarching topic or the higher overarching correspondence within which, depending on what I want to do, find more deeper and more nuanced words, items, herbs, uh, whichever it is that I use in combination with the planetary days and planetary hours so that uh, the ritual itself can be as focused as possible to what I currently want or need. If I wanted inspiration, I think I've, I've already wrote about that one because I don't, want, don't, don't like to share my, my rituals, so I usually make up. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to find inspiration for my uh, artistic work, I'd probably work with uh, Venus, depending on what exactly my art is, but let's say I'm a painter. I would work with Venus and with its visual, the correspondence of visual beauty and alluringness of, 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 of the art. And I would probably go with green colors and, and just generally go deep on the, on the, correspondence chain until I am able to code exactly what I want to do. You can do it without planets, of course, but it's much easier to work within the system, which is very well described, very well, very well sourced from history. You can already find... Hey, hey. Huh? It's frozen. <laughs> that are froze a little bit. Oh. Oh, yeah, she's back. Oh, good. Yeah. I froze very nicely. <laughs> uh, what was the last thing you heard, guys? <laughs> uh, the chain of correspondences, and then, yeah. then you were cont continuing. Yeah. Uh, basically, use the planets as a chain of correspondence. I, of course, work with entities as well, so I would probably ask for uh, guidance or assistance either by the planetary arch archangels, the intelligences, the spirits, and generally go again from bottom to top, from like the, the lower entities up until the very, like the archangels. I don't work with Olympian spirits that much because that would be a different kind of ritual. But yeah. But you were mentioning the Olympian spirits as well when you were writing the attunements for the, for, for the Liber Magicae yeah. first. Mm -hmm. Yes, but those are generally a little bit uh, of a different, or in my opinion, my, my, my view, those are a little bit different egregore than mm -hmm. the uh, angels in mm -hmm. general and the demons, which are more Western Abrahamic, where the Olympian demons are, no, not demon spirits, are like separate and you don't work with them usually in, com in connection with mm -hmm. the angels. They're like... Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Yeah, it's like a different kind of beings. Yeah, I've never heard about them before I, I've read your articles, so it's quite interesting to me. Okay, and uh, Leander? Um, I just want to say before this conversation, I have read Dattara's articles again, these attunements, and I have to say I really love them, um, especially Mercury, Mars, and Moon. 
I think I could like sign everything that you wrote there that I kind of view them that way as well. And it's interesting the way you describe how you use uh, correspondences, you know, underneath the broader understanding of the planet and then, you know, going down, down, down. Um, uh, me personally, when I started learning astrology, I didn't use plants for anything other than just, you know, reading charts. But this has uh, changed the time, especially since I started um, with um, collaboration on chemical. <laughs> you girls really kind of uh, influenced my view a little bit and the practice as well. Um, for example, if I would want to resolve an issue or work on something, I would look at the transits on my natal chart. What is happening in my life and what, um, in the sense, well, I don't know what you said about timing. I would see what the timing for me personally, mm -hmm. like what the time is good for considering the planets in my chart, what are the already existing issues in my chart or maybe pot potentials, talents and other stuff. And then with the transits, what is the environment like and what can I do within this environment for me to be in tune with what is happening? I always want to be in tune with what's going on rather than work against it. So, for example, um, we now have Jupiter in Aquarius and I already know that Jupiter, when, enter, when it enters Pisces, is going to be in a very good position. So, I want to gain, let's say, some sort of support from this Jupiter that will happen next year. So I will work in advance this year um, in order to put myself in tune with that in, in a way that I will take um, meanings and symbols of Jupiter in Aquarius and I will do, be doing, let's say, my homework, hoping that next year when it comes in very generous sign of Pisces that something will come back to me. That's mm -hmm. one so you basically are, um, as uh, we witches are calling towards uh, the planetary gods, let's say, uh, you are preparing yourself when the gods will have a good mood. Yeah. I'm so and good. then you will just say, oh yeah, I'm ready here. I have my notes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's uh, that's quite cool because uh, as well, it's quite connected uh, to you personally then. Uh, for example, in my practice, uh, mm, well, <laughs> in my practice, uh, I'm more working with just uh, what day of the week it is and uh, what uh, moon phase is it for the ritual. Not connected uh, to me. On the other hand, there are days and moon phases that are working better and easier for me. And those are those that are connected to my natal chart, actually, when I'm thinking about it. That the moon phase in which I was born is uh, more fond to me uh, when I'm creating some rituals, when I'm performing some rituals, it goes smoothlier, let's say. And as well, uh, the days, uh, the day which I was born in the week and uh, the day that is uh, under the rulership of uh, the ruler of my <laughs> star sign, those are as well quite... Uh, good for me to work not only on magic, not only on rituals uh, or some kind of devotional uh, practice, uh, but uh, also for any kind of uh, practice creativity and this uh, kind of things, giving my best from myself uh, those days works, works very well for me, indeed. So I would say generally in witchcraft, uh, you don't connect it that much uh, to your chart, but in the same time, each of us has some predisp predispositions, let's say, based on their charts and it might be influencing our practice. What do you think about it, Datura? Were you ever thinking about this uh, this way? Like, or um, are you working with the planets as well, or rather archetypally than uh, in connection to you and your chart? And Not in connection to me and my chart, because I must confess, I'm not very good at reading charts. <laughs> <laughs> However, however, I, I'm very grateful that Oleander actually mentioned timings and transits in general because I do at least look at that before, like the major rituals that I do that are more like are like planetarily archetypally connected rather than the rituals that work with entities. 
for example, I was um, I wrote about the money oil in. Uh, in that was all, yeah. <laughs> and it was autumn last year. <laughs> and uh, when I made mine, it was actually in the summer, and I know that I like both uh, Venus and Jupiter um, influences. However, I did it when Jupiter was not in a very good position. So the oil itself, while it works very well, is very much Venus-like. So even the, um, not Venus-like, but very much influenced by Venus because Venus was in a stronger position at, at the time when, when I made it. So the effects it has are not as much of jovial nature as, as as venus for example in a money oil I, I work as an artist aside from writing for femical so for me it was in great reviews great word, word of mouth very much like return of customers where for example if it were a more jupiter centered oil it would either um bring orders of a higher value or um like more renown in general but the venus side put it up, uh, put it more in the co personal customer to to, to business sphere mm -hmm. uh, if i were to be, make it again i'd probably wait for the year 2025 <laughs> <laughs> if i had the time to wait <laughs> and in that but, year because i have no idea it will be uh, more like uh, jovial jovial year other than uh, venus in if, I'm, if i'm if i'm not wrong uh in july or june in the year 25 uh jupiter enters cancer i think or something or so that's why mm -hmm. which is like one of one of its like strongest positions as far as i know but mm -hmm. leander will probably correct me <laughs> Um, if you wanted to wait for a good position of Jupiter, you could uh, take potentially next year when it will be in Pisces because like before Neptune, Jupiter was ruler of Pisces in traditional astrology. It's still kind of very well placed there as well. Mm -hmm. I will take that into consideration, though I still have a lot. So. <laughs> Uh, since uh, you just uh, said, Oleander, that uh, Jupiter used to rule another of the signs, and now it's uh, Neptune, uh, with how many of the heavenly bodies are you actually working? How many of them are existing yeah. in your practice? Uh, for me, as I mentioned already, it's uh, quite a lot, the sun and the moon, uh, plus uh, the rest of the traditional planets. Uh, which means till Saturn and uh, connected to the days of the week, but also Uranus, Neptune, plus uh, Pluto and Lilith and Chiron, or Chiron, Chiron, I hope that I'm pronouncing it uh, correctly in English. Uh, those are as well important for my practice, uh, rather than as uh, beings, than the uh, time-focused uh, stars, points, heavenly bodies in general. So that would be my list. Tatra. <laughs> <laughs> Classical seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm still 300 years behind science. And there's this thing that those seven are called planets. And I'm always so, or like on the beginning, I was always so confused about it because of uh, the sun is the star and the moon is the moon. So... <laughs> There's seven, but actually five is planets, as uh, as uh, the academicals uh, or scientists would say. Yeah, but they are called planets in ceremonial magic. That's it, isn't it? Yes. Uh, that, the reason is because at the time where when this system was developed and well, up until we had telescopes, these seven were what was seen in, in the sky and it dates back to ancient Egypt where everybody thought that uh, earth was in the middle. To me, like spiritually, it makes sense because the earth is in the middle of my universe. I know that for, for a fact, we don't, uh, or nothing rotates around us except for the moon. But generally, if I work with me as the center of my universe, it makes more sense to view 
the rest of the heavenly bodies to, to, to make you feel comfortable, <laughs> uh, to view them as uh, rotating around around Earth, not in like the physical sense of, of the rocks in space, but as archetypes and as energies that we they all have like feel. impact like this way. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And from astrological point of view, we are as well looking at the stars this way from our yes. place, isn't it, yes. Oleander? Yes, we put Earth in the middle, in the center. Is it? Even though we know that it's, um, you know, scientific, scientifically not correct, but we are not concerned with it. Earth is the center because we live on Earth. Like that, I said, we are the center of what is our interest or concern, whatever you work for, like you put yourself at the center. And uh, does it have roots as well in the history, in the times when, uh, yeah. yeah? So it's just coming from that human nature of thinking that uh, the earth is in the middle of everything, which maybe it is. <laughs> we are just floating well, around the sun. <laughs> generally in your life, you are in the middle of, of everything in your life. You don't have mm -hmm. a perspective of the view of other people because you're, the only perspective that you have is your own. Mm -hmm. And you're always the center of your world no matter what because that's the only point from which you can emanate outward mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm. uh, they were telling us also on the basic school i remember that till now that since we can't measure the universe and where it has borders or the end that we can always think that we are we personally are in the very middle yes yeah and in our practice of course we are talking towards uh, some uh, entities, some spirits, uh, but uh, it's always about our life. And even when it has like a higher purpose, higher meaning, or uh, let's say the whole planet, ecological rituals and this kind of things or healing and so on, uh, we are always including ourselves in this kind of concept, I believe. We were talking about it actually with Datra the other day that uh, it's kind of not advisable to make uh, or perform rituals for other people uh, for their kind of uh, goal, even though some people are doing it and it's their practice, it's absolutely okay to do so. Uh, if they can kind of wear those kind of astral gloves and uh, cut themselves off uh, this uh, kind of things. Uh, but uh, yeah, in the same time, we always invest our energy. So that way we are always present well generally if, if i may the way i imagine it is you have your own personal power in general power to do something power to change and the most power is right where you are you can do more change from starting with you than you can affect uh, across the world mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't matter whether you we're talking magic or personal influence activism mm -hmm. you can Always do most change starting from from within, from inside you. And the more you try to affect change outside of you, the harder it is. So even in that sense, you are you are the center. You're mo most powerful now, not yesterday, not tomorrow, mm -hmm. but at the moment where you are existing in the current current time. Mm -hmm. That's where you can affect change. It's not tomorrow. Tomorrow doesn't exist. Yesterday doesn't exist. The only moment is here and now, and that's the only powerful moment there is. So in that sense, again, you are the center of your zone of influence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's as within, so without. Yes. It's starting from, from you. And uh, I had an idea about which I wanted to ask <laughs> Oleander too. Uh, yeah. Um, so we are now talking about uh, how you can basically affect uh, and influence uh, your surroundings from from your own place but in astrology or in your practice or connection of both um aren't the planets slightly telling us or setting us some kind of uh, borders and uh, some spaces of uh, freedom aren't we a bit limited from them as well uh, to a degree <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that of course depends on us, but uh, like we all know that not everyone 
have 100% influence or control over mm -hmm. their own life or even a level of awareness of what is act actually happening from which part of your psyche are you reacting or why are you doing what are you doing not everyone are looking at themselves let's say maybe critically or with a high degree of curiousness or so I would say your level of awareness or how much are you working with these um, with these issues is the level by which you could mm -hmm. be limited or influenced by the planets. So to a, to a degree, yes, but not always and not 100%. So um, in case that I will have absolutely no self-reflection and uh, I will not be digging into charts, I might be really supporting some uh, negative uh, effect in my chart or a negative transit. While when I know about these things, I can get ready like for the next year when the Jupiter will be fond to me in some specific uh, cases or specific areas. Uh, well, n not just charts. So if you're, let's say some, any person and you decide to go to a therapy or psychotherapy or to, to somebody to talk to, you are kind of actively working on resolving your issues, you're looking into your life with a little bit of self-reflection, like you don't need a chart, right? Mm -hmm. If you are, if you have any sort of spiritual practice, you don't need a chart, but it is helpful. It's like a diagnose, let's say, of mm -hmm. what could be wrong and where could be maybe a way out or a solution or what could be a good timing to work on that issue. So it's, it's more like a help with other stuff that you're doing on your own already. Mm -hmm. hey. I generally agree if, if I may add my two cents mm -hmm. outside of uh, personal astrology. Generally, I don't think there are borders. I think it's just currents and sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's harder and you can work with both. Mm -hmm. But if you can, it's why would you make it purposely more hard for yourself? But if there is no choice and, and if, for example, Jup uh, Jupiter is in Cancer in three years or four years, but I need money now, I'm not going to but wait three or four years, but I'll at least do it on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. on, on the planetary hour of Jupiter, or is, at least, I don't know, wait for a time when Jupiter is not in retrograde. You, mm -hmm. you, for the perfect available moment, but doesn't have to be necessarily the perfect moment in general. Mm -hmm. You just try to lessen, lessen um, the potential hardship or the potential... Uh, Struggles struggles hmm. but you can do it either way it's not a limitation it's just if you have a lot of personal power and a lot of um, yeah a lot of personal power you can do whatever you want whenever you want <laughs> yeah and i would say i would add to it that uh, sometimes uh, your schedule and everything in your life might go that way that you need to perform the ritual in the time that would not really be uh, suggestible or that would not supposed to be supportive to you but if i personally was supposed to choose if i will you I, if i will perform a ritual half hour before i'm supposed to be somewhere by dentist at work or something like that uh and perform it uh, really quickly and with power uh in the perfect timing planetary wise or if i can perform it sometime on Saturday, I will have two hours for it and I will be able to go to forests for it and so on. I will always choose a day which might not uh, be so good for it or time that might not be so working for it rather than to perform the ritual under the pressure in the stress and uh, in like personal, internal or inner uh, non-well-being. <laughs> Well, for me, it, it would be definitely that way. Maybe those X hundreds years ago, uh, it was totally different. Maybe in that times, 
I can imagine that people were really waiting for that specific special time and they scheduled that that night they will perform uh, the ritual. We were actually talking with Oleander the other day in uh, our other chat. Uh, how is it uh, working with uh, the moon phases? Because uh, in Eclectic Witchcraft we basically have three to five days around the full moon when we can perform the full moon ritual. Uh, while in astrology it is exactly that moment and maybe from that moment and might work this energy for for a little bit so yeah uh i think we can move to another question and uh welcome alex oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes welcome alex now no, there is a break i just wanted to say you you touched on a very interesting thing and that hundreds of years ago they had time or whatever i think that's the biggest difference between uh, between like general and I'll, I'll be speaking very generally, but between general witchcraft and like the classic occultism, because general witchcraft was always like for the people, for like actual tangible things, I need to solve a problem using whatever I have at hand. If you talk like old occultists, those were usually white, privileged, rich men. <laughs> who had nothing better to do than try to achieve enlightenment. <laughs> it's true though, it's it's true. So of course, if you, if you look at like old books uh, and like old occult books and high magic books, you'll find stuff that is just unreasonable to have from Enochian full on 24 karat gold tablets and whatever to lion pel lion pel pel <laughs> Our whatever <favorite> one. <laughs> of course if you can have those things it's better but if you can't have them then just do as best as you can and that goes to me even for like planetary times and uh your own possibilities if i had to choose between a 30 a uh, 30 minute quick ritual in a perfect time or two hour uh, later not a perfect time i'd probably try for the 30 minutes but that's me because i have mm -hmm. a different amount of spoons and i'd rather work with the current and just be able to give less of my energy and take more from the outside but if i had no choice then i'd do it on on the other day or a week later if because i'm not a rich privileged <laughs> middle... yeah, but, but still <laughs> here we are trio cool women <laughs> Uh, yeah, anyway, I think that this is uh, pointing back. So, sorry, Oleander, we will give you a word <laughs> in a minute again. Okay. Uh, it's pointing back to my idea that our charts are actually also somehow uh, underlying or working on us and uh, focusing on our practice as well, because I'm quite a structure and it might be because of my chart and you are quite flexible and it might be also because of your chart. And that's why I would choose time when I can just prepare everything and plan it while you would be able to flexibly work on it straight away tuck right now and then go to another task because that's our, that, that are our natural abilities. Yes, yes. I think that's just personal, mm -hmm. depending on, on who's ever practiced. It's not a dogma that you have to do it on the right planetary hour and day and, and when Jupiter is dignified. And <laughs> <laughs> what is dignified, Oleander? <laughs> um, I in never know. Indignity. So when it's, it is in the position where, in the sign where it rules or it's exalted. And what is exalted? I never know these terms. <laughs> So you have um, four essential dignities. It's uh, the domicile, planet is at home. So Sun mm -hmm. is in Leo, Venus is in Taurus, Mars is in uh, Aries. You have then the opposite, it's detriment. It means like this planet is like banished. Mm -hmm. So for the Sun, that would be Aquarius. For Venus, that would be Scorpio. Then you have exalted, like the planet is on the throne. It feels very good in this sign and it's kind of um, showing its best qualities for Venus, that's Pisces, um, for Jupiter, that's Cancer, for uh, Sun, that is um, Aries. And then the sign opposite of that is the Fall. Again, the planet is also a bit um, less inclined to show the best qualities. It's a little mm -hmm. bit challenged in that mm -hmm. sign. Okay. 
Cool. Yeah, well, thank you for a little bit of terminology. We have loads of messages from Adele Alex. Uh, will you read them, Datura, or? Yes, yes. Um, first of all, she thinks Alex is better than her own, which I disagree, <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad she likes it. <laughs> uh, then she writes, I agree with you girls on this. I love to look on the planets and what's going on above, but I would always choose the day and the time, which is better for me. And I would always go with my own flow. And I absolutely agree too. If that's your jam, then it's the best thing you can do. Uh, and I'm such a Virgo with this. Uh, I also love to plan, but sometimes it's better to go with the flow, even when I don't have so much time. It's true. Yeah, I'd say that as the earthly... Oh, hi, hi John. Uh, as the hi, earthly signs, <laughs> I'm Taurus. <laughs> uh, Adele, Alex is Virgo. We are the planning guys. <laughs> We just Thank need you. our time to set it right and to have the time for a chocolate afterwards. That's the thing, you know. <laughs> okay, uh, let's uh, move to another question. So my second question was, uh, how are the planets uh, seen, understood, perceived, fel felt? And uh, I'd say that we were talking about that kind of rational way. How do we perceive planets? How do we understand them about those uh, <laughs> about uh, those correspondences? And we kind of game, gave them their own uh, place or their own box. But it would be quite interesting for me to hear from you. How do you feel the planets more emotionally if you can uh, describe it in in words for example um, we were um, we were traveling i believe it was uh, the last weekend or the weekend before i believe it was last weekend uh we were traveling for uh some some trip and uh it was already moon uh on the sky and it was a full moon and it was looking into our window into the car and i just couldn't rest the whole journey i just felt so like not really being sitting in the car i felt slightly in danger like in in danger of of that energy of that yellow eye looking at me mirroring the uh, sun uh, rays and um, about other planets i feel them more or less uh, on the same level as well as uh, the other correspondences or other gods from other mythologies. Uh, I perceive them as uh, beings that are similar to Celtic gods, German gods, Slavic gods, uh, this uh, kind of uh, stuff. The fact that they have their own planet on the sky is uh, not so much included in the way how I am attuning to them. And maybe also that's the reason why I don't read transits before I go to perform a ritual and why I don't uh, specifically search for the planetary hour or exact time and why I can also quite easily skip to another day to a different day that might not be uh, perfectly fitting planetary wise or from the perspective of planetary magic. Um, so, well, I would say I definitely feel the Mercury, Venus, Mars and others as beings, but not so much connected to the planets as they physically are. Rather in the same way that I feel, let's say, Kernunos or Odin. Interesting. I made notes. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, something in, in which we are, I, I would say that uh, because um, when we were talking about how we rationally would uh, put them or place them in our practice, we agreed perfectly. But now the feelings might be completely different. So, Datra, how do you feel about them? <laughs> well, um... well, I'm in love with Venus. <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> She's much um, better than Aphrodite. <laughs> I actually, in 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 that sense, I don't view the planets as beings at all. Mm -hmm. I, for me, it's just even I, I could even call it an egregore, of mm -hmm. some sort. 
to me, if we speak, I don't know, moon, sun, mercury, whatever, it's an egregore. It's not a being, it's not a god to me. It's just a house in which a lot of similar things dwell. Mm -hmm. And that's how I view it. I don't feel them because unless I, like, annually, if, if I go out, I'm, I'm not feeling, oh, this is a mercury energy. No, it's just when I connect to them, like, purposefully, then you can feel the archetype or you entering that house and actually feeling the way it's set up, uh, how it smells, how it looks, how it's lit, how it's whatever, the beings that are in there, the things that are in there, uh, everything. But yeah. <laughs> okay. That's very interesting. Um, sometimes when I look at the chart and I have this habit, like if I'm advising something or telling something to a friend or a client, I would look for the best possible, like the strongest, best possible aspect in that chart. And I would kind of support or advise that person would play more into this. And in, in, in that way, I would maybe think like that, what everything that this planet symbolizes, represents and, 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 you know, contains that person kind of put itself more into this planet. So if you imagine that our chart or our life is like a stage and these planets are different actors, you would always play one part better than any other. And that would be your strongest, strongest part. And maybe you would have most success into that part, most clapping, you know, mm -hmm. awards, everything you want that you want. Recognition, you know, approval, success, happiness and everything. So I would look which part would that be and then how can person step into that part or if person wants to resolve the bad part, okay, how, how you get into that. So this is like what you think very, very interesting to me, but with feeling the planets, um, I would say I feel, I say like influence of the planet. I feel in my life influence of the planet. That's Definitely. Um, for example, with again with the transits, Saturn transits. It's like undeniable how how um, how pres present it was in my life. Even though I'm not again with the timing, I made some big life decisions at a time which was completely inappropriate. You know, with the transits. Um, but I used it to maybe learn more how this planet then, you know, mm -hmm. acts way when you are going against it and what kind of struggle and how does it feel and what can manifest itself around you when, when you're going in direction that is not, maybe it's not the flow. So that's the way and how I understood, understand it in my articles, I'm, um, often connecting the connecting uh, the planets to Greek mythology, but this is because this is my personal way of understanding. Like when I was a small child, my mom used to read me Greek mm -hmm. mythology stories. I grew up with them and I understood, you know, what's going on. So for me, it's the easiest way to connect them, but they're not limited just to these, or these, these stories, this way of mm -hmm. explaining them and understanding them. Yeah, yeah, I I have that there also the connection with the mythical stories from the childhood, because I'd say Greek mythology was always quite quite a thing, and uh, yeah, I, I I definitely agree with uh, this part. Okay, I have here uh, from our technical support. Uh, uh, a question if we could take a uh, five minutes a uh, little break so I can take care about uh, our little one but I will read you the last question that I have here before uh, we will go for a little bit so you can already think about it if you would like to so the last one will be what planets and uh, other bodies are used in your practice so I was already talking a little bit about the moon but uh, if you would like to share with uh, us and also you guys uh, in the chat uh, share with us uh, what uh, kind of uh, heavenly bodies are you using the most in your practice and uh, in which way specifically for your rituals yeah and we will uh, 
see each other here just uh, in about five minutes. Yep. Okay. Hey. Cool. Okay, we are back. We are back. <laughs> so, yeah, well, uh, the last uh, question before we will delve into Datura's notes. <laughs> because <laughs> she just said, oh, and then I have your notes. So, yeah, we will. I will definitely next time also take a paper and write some notes because... Uh, I'm always trying to remember that one word from which I will continue. And then there's another. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we will use our Liber Commentarium. Uh, and then I just find another word and I'm trying to keep it in my mind. And in the same time, uh, continue listening for the rest of your uh, speech or talk. Yeah, well, so uh, how do you? use uh, planets uh, specifically if uh, we could maybe put it a little bit more into the structure so for me it's days in the week uh, the planetary correspondences the planets are influencing different uh, things and are connected to different items colors and so on colors are another of uh, <laughs> our favorite parts of uh, connection to planets and attunement attunement uh, to planets and disagreements <laughs> indeed i was just uh, checking in my book of shadows what colors i have for mercury uh, and for for jupiter the other day and they are completely different than ours <laughs> than your traditional classical ones and my <laughs> my feeling ones um and then uh, then the moon plus i'm uh, also time to time working with uh, the deities like luna venus saturn and so on, but not so much connected to uh, their heavenly bodies. But that's that's a different question than you than, than you asked before you left. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I I'm sure. No, you, so you said what planets and other bodies are used in your practice? Yes, I'm just reading. Yes, that's the question. What question do you think did I ask before we went? The, this one. Break? This I one. I answered a different one. Am I answering a different one? Yes, I think so. What planets and other bodies? Aha, yeah, well, maybe maybe my answer was rather to something else. <laughs> yeah, well, so if I'm supposed to count them, <laughs> it would be Sun, Moor, Moon, Mercury, Mercury Venus, Mars, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, and also Uran, Neptune, Pluto, Lilith, Chiron, and Earth. No, but which ones do you use, like, in your practice the most? Was ah, that... yeah, that's the thing that I kind of have here the note, but I don't have here the most. Yeah, the most, uh, it will be the sun. From uh, the sun. It will be the moon. Sorry. It will be the sun, definitely, its impact because of the Sabbaths, because I'm typically going through the wheel of the year uh, through those eight Sabbaths. I'm not celebrating as buds typically for each uh, full moon or dark moon or specific phase of the moon, but I'm considering moon the most when I'm looking into planets during my practice. Yeah. So should I go? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I hope that now I answered what I asked myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think so, I think so. Um, well, generally, I love Venus. <laughs> uh, was i right actually what was i right actually that you love venus i like it <laughs> <laughs> no um uh for me the answer would be like uh, in a different way because i use i use most planets i avoid like the plague mars <laughs> <laughs> i had a respect I from saturn but yeah, I, uh, Mars is also specific. Depending depending on on what I need, I'm open to anything. But I've worked with like Mars specifically a couple of times, and I always was too overwhelmed and wanted to kill people. <laughs> <laughs> 
So uh, generally, um, I love all of them. Most of them with Venus, of course, because I'm an artist. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I avoid Mars like the plague. I, I can't deal. Maybe maybe it's something within me that just makes me respond to martial to martial energy so much. It's interesting that uh, when when Oleander said she liked the Mars article, the Mars article was the hardest for me to write. <laughs> oh, it was cool. It was the hardest for me to write because I didn't want my uh, like um, distaste to show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm sorry, Mars, but that's how it is. And that's my answer. <laughs> okay, um, I'm working with like heavenly, heavenly bodies, 10 of them, plus I look at uh, Chiron as well, and North and South Moon nodes, not all the time and not every time. I think 10 heavenly bodies are the most important and everything else is kind of like a extra insight, you know, extra information, support, and I consider it important if there is like a conjunction to the aspects to angles or other planets. So if they're, if they're like, if they're like uh, accented in some way, I will take a look at them as well. But otherwise, 10 plants for me personally, most important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, so we we covered this one quite quite quickly because that's something that we actually have in our practice and our feeling and our experience. So, yeah, it's incomparable, for for sure. Uh, Adele Alex is uh, texting us uh, that she would say the Moon and uh, Mercury; those are the planets that I react the most uh, to, and uh, I would work mostly with uh, Moon. Uh, Adele. Text us for sure if uh, you are reacting to Mercury retrograde, because I know that with the Datura you were making loads of fun the other day when we had to hear the <laughs> the struggles with technology that it's a Mercury retrograde, and I'm not that much for for that retrograde things uh, in general. So let us know if uh, that uh, has some kind of impact uh, on you. Does it have impact on you, girls? Yeah, Mercury. <laughs> really? I know that Rhoda sometimes says, like, it's a full moon, it, w it will be better in two days. <laughs> <laughs> I know that <laughs> sometimes <laughs> this happens uh, in, uh, in, our, in our chat, but, uh, yeah, maybe a little I, bit. Yeah, like, would I, you write an article in Mercury Retrograde? I would immediately. For me, I, I would not even know that it's retrograde. Why? And that, well, that's 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 an idea. I'm writing it down. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, I don't um, respond so hard to like most of the retrogrades. I didn't notice uh, the retrogrades last year, the, the the Jupiter and Venus. But whenever it's Mercury, it's it affects my life from 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 the technical difficulties we had to trouble understanding what mm -hmm. people want from you to post getting lost in the mail <laughs> or broken or, or whatever, which which all of it generally is false, at least in the classical sense, under Mercury. So that's 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 something that like has deep impact on my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, Adele agrees in the chat. She writes, of course, I feel that as well, but I don't think it is so negative. Uh, you can use it also in a positive way, I would say in course, learning so. how to be quiet and not send messages <laughs> that would be the positive way that i would use the mercury retrograde <laughs> for personally <laughs> oh, um, will, but yeah. we, we live in a digital world especially like the last year uh, i have to send orders every week uh, we have to send orders every week so there are things you, you can't really use it mm -hmm. positively but in magic and in ritual of course you can uh, use the retrograde to your advantage. I'm ju I'm speaking about more like the life consequences that you can't really do anything about, like postal office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, Oleander, what do what you and the retrograde planets? I'm basically asking you every time we are talking about this because it's yeah. such a, such a good topic. Everybody is talking about it, and I'm totally. What is happening there? Maybe it's because of I'm Taurus and my Mercury is also in Taurus and they are just like 
chilling on the field with the chocolate in the hand. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm more with you, um, Belladonna, that I don't really... Uh, well, it, it's bad to say I don't really pay that much attention to retrogrades. Like, I do pay attention to them, but I'm not very much concerned with them unless we're talking about Mars, because Mars retrograde is, like... At least I can notice around me effects of it kind of very acutely. So mm-hmm. I, I would maybe be extra careful around this time or just avoid maybe some activities that I would usually take or something like that. But otherwise, like Mercury retrograde, like it's retrograde half of the year, every year. Yeah. You know, it's kind of you can't really put your life for six months on pause because Mercury is in retrograde. So you just go with it. Yeah. Uh, may I read to yeah. the others or, or do you want to continue? I, I will, yeah. Uh, so Adele Alex says, uh, well, I will have to choose one one of these. So today it will be Alex. So Alex says, yeah, exactly. Uh, when some things do, uh, don't work, uh, you should use that time to meditate or concentrate on uh, yourself. Be still and quiet. Uh, during retrogrades of Mercury, I'm using that energy more for reading go inwards and I know I'm not really good with uh, words and communicating at that time so I'm trying to stay more quiet and listen more yeah and again we are now getting back to what Orlando was uh, saying about uh, self-reflection and um, about knowing what are maybe the transits uh, maybe the other effects of uh, the planets or the moon in that uh, specific time and uh, just uh, including it in uh, the way how we are preparing for a day or how we how we are acting in or in our daily life or in practice yep okay well so uh datra did you want to add something on or will we uh, jump I into wanted your... to ask a few more questions if, yeah, if, yeah. if you don't mind uh, or if, if we have time because um first day or uh, first question goes more to Belladonna, but I'd like uh, the answer from from um, from both of you, Oleander. Um, when you first started during this stream, you mentioned uh, that you viewed the planets. I'm, I'm not. Sure, I'm paraphrasing, and I'm not sure if I'm if I'm um, saying right what you said, but that you view them as archetypes. But also, you mentioned gods and beings, and I wanted to ask you whether. Uh, what prevails or what is like stronger with you, whether it's the animist side of like the um, personification of the planets or whether you're more into the archetypal stuff, first of all? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I will answer and then I will have to mute myself and I will ask the little one to come from the next room because I can hear her even over my headphones. Uh, yeah, so to me, uh, prevails the correspondences. Uh, in the same time, I wanted to also talk about uh, feeling them like a, a genie lozi, like the spirits of the place, because of uh, there are plenty of spirits of the place in the nature with uh, which I'm working, that this is my animistic uh, way, and uh, I'm working with those that are here with us on planet Earth. And through this chat, I came to the idea of uh, the spirits of the place that are above or out of the earth and are in the sky or in the universe and those are those connected uh, to the planets plus at the moment i'm also working in uh, two uh, different uh, so who is he constellations constellations as well and uh, one of them is alpha or one of them is alpha centauri and uh, the stars around uh, so those are as well basically the genie loci, the specific place uh, beings, and I'm communicating with them here from the earth. But it's basically like communicating with you over the meat, rather than with people who live with me in my household, which is the way I'm communicating with uh, the spirits uh, on the earth. But mainly, maybe also because of this. I'm working rather with uh, correspondences than with uh, planets as beings. On the other hand, uh, I believe uh, the quote by Lev Dennis from 1904, I'd say, 
from his book uh, After Death, where he says, uh, I'm also writing about it, I believe, in Spring Issue this year, where he says that uh, the highest gods are the ones that are very on the top, are uh, souls of the stars. And I'm playing with this idea a lot at the moment in my practice, in its connection to the universe. But I was always uh, more inclining to that earthly energy as an earthly sign, <laughs> uh, rather than to the universe energy, even though I also have uh, Reiki as you do, Datura, I am not channeling that much from there as I'm taking from the roots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and now I will let you chat and I will just uh, ask our support to bring me the little one. Bring me the baby! <laughs> uh, and what about you, Oleander? Well, since I'm not into like um, magical practice, as far as I know, what I'm doing is not um, under that definition. Um, but I look at the planets when I started with astrology. So when I started first learning about it and using it, for me, it was mostly correspondences and like, you know, the, the, the material tangible and the planets was just something that symbolized, you know, there was this connection like planet material world. But now it's more... Okay, so to continue, um, but now I am, uh, how uh, Belladonna said, she's playing with this thought that uh, the high spots are the spirits of the planets. Um, I'm playing with the thought that planet is God, is the thing, that they're all the same thing. So Mars is planet Mars, is Eris God of War, is knife, is color red, is anger, is mm -hmm. sexual impulse, is, you know, fight or flight, that they're all the same, just on different levels. Mm -hmm. I, if I understand you correctly, I think I, I agree, but I, I assign them like hierarchy. For example, that uh, Mars is more God of War than fight, of, fight or flight, then I don't know, you know, but that's again what I'm talking about when I'm saying that through correspondence you go deep up until like the smallest little things to actually like program or say exactly what you need to say through ritual, even though, for example, you, you, you don't perform magic as far as I understand. But again, even even for example, if you if you talk astrology, you still need to explain to your clients and to people what exactly Mars can bring. And even in the charts, I guess it can be like the littlest thing that that plays a part in a person's life. But if you say, "Oh, Mars, that's war," <laughs> it was like, mm, "I'm not at war." <laughs> yeah, you have to um, observe like. All the symbols, but at, uh, here is where astrology is not exact science. It, it 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 has to be an element of, you know, a little bit of what you see there. Like, for example, I don't know when you look at the tarot cards or something. Uh, what is coming up for you, as well, plus all these symbols and explanations. So when you look at the chart, and you see Mars, you know, okay, war. Maybe this person is just having okay if it's a bad mars for example if, if it's like in some bad challenging aspect if it's in a bad sign for mars or something like that maybe the person is having issues with what is what can represent mars and, and you as well have to look at the person and like what kind of image will come come out of the chart for you sometimes it's very accurate sometimes it's kind of more abstract yeah, well, it's it's the same with tarot. Tarot is not not uh, not an exact science either. But w in combination, you you eliminate some possibilities and add more, and then you have to read the room, in 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 a sense, and choose or decide which whichever is best. But uh, I wanted to, Gori, uh, you hear us, right? Uh, I can, and I will just add on, uh, I didn't hear what you were chatting about now, 
but uh, the tarot came on my mind as well. I just didn't want to make it totally huge chat today and move to move towards tarot. Uh, but with the Mercury retrograde, I was also thinking about if you are using reversed cards, because that that's to me a little bit similar. I can feel their similar energy, and I have I to don't. mute myself again. But ask if you need. <laughs> I don't use uh, reverse cards, not 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 like um, by design. Sometimes I do, but again, that's reading the room again. If if, if you feel that card is uh, difficult, however, uh, as long as I have Oleander here, I wanted to ask you: Do you have uh, some uh, resources or some, uh, for example, websites you can recommend to people if they want to pull their own chart? or if they want to look for transits and current planetary uh, positions for their own practice, do you have some websites or...? Yeah, well, I use the most basic one, it's astra.com. So there you can look, um, there is, a, you can generate your own chart, transits and everything, but you can also look at eph ephemeride. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but it's basically the tables of, you know, all the positions of all the heavenly bodies and then you can like kind of just calculate where it would be okay i will ask you for for uh, a link in our chat and we can then add it to the description uh, when we go to youtube so that everybody can just click because i think it's important for us not only to speak about you know um the, the timings and the transitions but maybe provide some resource as well if if somebody would like to try to go more exact way <laughs> oh perfect oh yeah and it appeared also in the video but i will copy it also uh below to uh to the youtube video and uh for those who live in czech republic and maybe also slovakia i'm not sure about it uh there is this portal called najdise and uh, if you will google najdise you will find a lot of information as well your chart partners chart and uh, the transits and so on if you need plus all the other different types of uh, astrology also eastern astrology and so on so that would be my my tip from my side there is also a mobile app uh, called planetary hours which depending on where you are will actually calculate the planetary hours for the upcoming day and night so you can basically uh, just pull it up and and have everything calculated and not have to use a table and then, then divide the day by 12 <laughs> or by seven and i don't know now i'm getting confused but you know what i mean <laughs> and i'm using uh on uh, my iphone i'm using the app called simply moon it has uh the this just like this circle just the just the moon as a as an icon and uh yeah you can uh, see there always, uh, you will set there where you live and uh, you can see there always uh, in what phase is the moon, uh, what are the percentage, uh, what is the percentage of that phase and so on. There's also uh, sun, when is uh, the dawn, when is uh, the sunrise and so on. Uh, plus I'm using this app mainly when I'm doing um, uh, readings from Stromoculum as well. When I'm doing readings from Stromoculum uh, connected to separate uh, weeks or separate days, not full months, uh, I'm using this this app as well to check uh, the influence of the moon if it's incoming energy. Energy. Yep. And uh, just as a note for for the moon stuff, Google Calendar has actually public calendar that at least has the phases of the moon the four basic ones so if you, if, if anybody's using google calendar uh you can just add that calendar to their own calendar and shows them at least the four basics if if, if you don't work with the moon at, at least that should be helpful and Yeah, then I have more questions, but those are maybe for, for a completely new chat because that would be for a long time. <laughs> because I actually wanted, or maybe, maybe maybe we can do that uh, another week, but maybe we could uh, delve into the planets like one by one and uh, not only what they mean, but generally um, even we can even go as, as, as deep as like um, the exaltations and good timings, bad timings, which 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 rituals to do on a retrograde, which, which ones to do on a direct on each planet, but that's for completely another day because that would be another two hours at least. 
in my opinion. But that was one of my notes. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. I was already uh, thinking about uh, this idea as well. So we could definitely cover cover the planets a little bit as well in some other chat. I'm not sure if next week, maybe we could do uh, Czech language next week. Also, uh, Alex was texting that she's uh, not uh, using reversed cards mostly. Sometimes uh, when she feel, feels it's right, uh, but mainly not. Uh, yeah, well, anyway, we could definitely continue. <laughs> <laughs> with this but <laughs> i'd say that uh, we have here the time for evening playing <laughs> yay 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 okay <laughs> so uh, do you have any more notes datura that i would give you space without my mic or will mm, we slowly the notes would be for the longer chats now that i yeah. think about it. okay okay definitely let's uh, chat about it in our writing chat uh, in uh, our femical chat and uh, we can figure some uh, more ideas uh, for uh, more um streams and more more twitch talks so if you guys will have any ideas also let us know in the chat or also you can uh, text us comment under the YouTube video where this uh, stream will be definitely posted together with the links that we just mentioned. And thank you for coming to our Femme Occult Garden tonight and see you soon. Hey! Bye! -bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>